Hi everyone, Miss Cannerin here again. Today, our objective that we're going to focus on is how can I participate in healthy activities? This was one of the objectives that was on our enrichment activity. So I'm going to tie that in with a really awesome book called A Fine, Fine School. This is written by Sharon Creech and it's illustrated by Harry Bliss and our publishers are Harper Collins Publishers. So this is a fiction story and we all know that fiction means that it's fake or not real. Excellent. So this is a story about a girl named Tilly and her principal thinks that their school is amazing but he starts to add school on the weekends, add school on holidays, and Tilly's realizing some of the things she gets, she's missing out on at home, like with her brother and her dog Beans. So she decides to go and talk to the principal, Mr. Keene, about slowing it down with school and just having it during the year. So we'll see what Mr. Keene says when Tilly talks to him at the end. If you didn't already make a text-to-text -text connection, we have Tilly here as our fictional character, but then we also have Tilly Smith, a real girl, in our Tsunamis and Other Natural Disasters book. So if you made that connection, great job. So before we get started, as always, we have our vocabulary to go over. So our first word is strolled. And of course, we have our suffix ed. We know that ED is in the past like laugh, to laugh in the past. So our root word, if we take away our suffix, is to stroll. When you take a stroll, it just means to walk. Like I went for a stroll in the park. Now I just used our root word, but you can always add the suffix ED. Oh no, Bella's playing with my blinds again. Bella! Sorry about that. So our motion when Miss Cannon gets to the word strolled, we're just going to walk across like this, like you're taking a stroll or a walk. Our next word is creek. A creek is like a stream or you could say a tiny river. You might see a creek in a park. Um, <clears throat> and like Miss Cannon said, it's just like a tiny river. You might see rocks at the bottom. It's not very deep either, a creek. So our motion for creek is going to be this for tiny, and then we're going to make the water. So. Excellent. And then our last one is cheer. Now you could cheer and it would be like a verb or you could, cheer could also be a noun. I would call it an abstract down noun. And I've said this before in class. We know a noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. But an abstract noun is one of those, but you can't touch it. You can't touch a cheer, okay? So <clears throat> in this instance, in this story, a cheer is acting as a noun, which is a shout of joy, which usually we say yay in a cheer. So our motion for cheer is going to be, we're gonna use words for this one. We're going to say yay. So when you hear the word cheer. So let's go through our three vocabulary words. So we have strolled, which is a walk. We have creek. And then we have cheer. Yay! Excellent. So if you'd like to follow along with me as I'm reading, that would be great. I'm going to put these... So after we read, I'll explain what our question is that goes along with our story. And then Ms. Cannon has a bonus question to do. So 
here we go, a fine, fine school. Mr. Keene was a principal who loved his school. Every morning he strolled down the hallway and saw the children in their classes. He saw them learning shapes and colors and numbers and letters. He saw them reading and writing and drawing and painting. He saw them making dinosaurs and forts and pyramids. Oh, he would say, aren't these fine, fine children? Aren't these fine teachers? Isn't this a fine, fine school? And as you can see, there are quotation marks around what Mr. Keene is saying out loud. Near Mr. Keene's school, Tilly lived with her parents and her brother and her dog Beans in a small house next to a big tree. On Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, Tilly went off to school. And you see the boy there, he's passing along a spider. At school, Tilly learned her shapes and colors and numbers and letters. Sometimes when she saw Mr. Keene standing in the hallway, he waved. Aren't these fine children, he said to himself. Aren't these fine teachers? Isn't this a fine, fine school? On the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, Tilly climbed her favorite tree. It says, I'm stuck, get help. And she took Beans on walks and threw him sticks. She said, let go now, Beans. <laughs> and she pushed her brother on a swing and tried to teach him how to skip. Her little brother said, be one with the skip. So these are the things she did on the weekends. But on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, Tilly went off to school. Beans and her brother did not like to see her go. Hurry, hurry, hurry home, her brother called. One day, Mr. Keene called all the students and teachers together and said, This is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school on Saturdays, too. The teachers and students did not want to go to school on Saturdays, but no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers of all the learning they were doing every day. How would you feel if you were at Mr. Keene's school and he said you had to go to school on Saturdays now? And so that Saturday, Tilly set off for school. But it's Saturday. What about the swings? Her brother called. The following month, Mr. Keene announced, this is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school on Sundays too. The teachers and the students did not want to go to school on Sundays, but no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers and of all the learning they were doing every day. So now, seven days a week, they'd be going to school. Look at the dog. And so, that Saturday, Tilly set off for school. But it's Sunday! What about the skipping? Her brother called. The following month, Mr. Keene called everyone together and said, This is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school on holidays, too. On Easter and Ramadan and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah on all the holidays on every calendar. The teachers and students did not want to go to school on holidays, but no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers and of all the learning they were doing every day. Could you imagine not having Christmas off? And so, on Christmas, Tilly set off for school. But it's Christmas! What about Christmas? Her brother called. 
The following month, Mr. Keene called everyone together and said, I wonder what he's going to say now. This is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have school in the summer too. All summer long. Every single day. <gasps> Whoa. How much will we learn, he said. We can learn everything. We will learn about numbers and letters and colors and shapes, the Romans and the Egyptians and the Greeks. We will learn about dinosaurs and castles and, and everything. We will learn everything. The teachers and the students did not want to go to school on Saturdays and Sundays and holidays and all summer long, every single day. But no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers of all the learning they were doing every day. And so, on the first day of summer, Tilly set off for school. But it's summer, what about summer? Her brother called. And that day, Tilly went to see Mr. Keene. She stood in his office in front of his desk. What a fine, fine school this is, Mr. Keene said. What amazing things everyone is learning. Yes, Tilly said. We certainly are learning some amazing things. A fine, fine school, Mr. Keene said. But, Tilly said, not everyone is learning. What, Mr. Keene said. He looked very worried. Who? Who is it learning? Tell me and I will see that they learn. My dog, Beans, hasn't learned how to sit, Tilly said, and he hasn't learned how to jump over a creek. Oh, Mr. Keene said, and my little brother hasn't learned to swing or skip. Oh, Mr. Keene said. The dog's pushing him and he said, wrong way, Beans. And I, she said, but you go to school, Mr. Keene said, to our fine, fine school. True, Tilly said, but I haven't learned how to climb very high in my tree. And I haven't learned how to sit in my tree for a whole hour. Oh, Mr. Keene said. Hmm, I wonder what he will do. That day, Mr. Keene walked up and down the halls, looking at the children and the teachers. Up and down, he strolled. Up and down, up and down. The next morning, Mr. Keene called everyone together. The children and the teachers were very worried. Mr. Keene said, this is such a fine, fine school with fine, fine children and fine, fine teachers. But not everyone is learning. The children and the teachers were very, very worried. Look at all their faces. Mr. Keene said, there are dogs who need to learn how to sit and how to jump creeks. What did he mean? Was he going to make their dogs come to school too? There are little brothers and sisters who need to learn how to swing and how to skip. What did he mean? Was he going to make their younger brothers and sisters come to school too? The children and the teachers were very, very worried. And you, all of you, children and teachers, you need to learn how to climb a tree and sit in it for an hour, Mr. Keene said. The children and the teachers were very worried. He said 20 minutes to go. And so from now on we will look at their faces. They're like mm, no more. Not have school on Saturdays or Sundays or holidays or in the summer. A huge enormous roaring cheer. Yay! soared up to the ceiling and floated out the window so that everyone in town heard the fine, fine children and the fine, fine teachers shout, fine, fine, fine.
fine. And the fine, fine children and the fine, fine teachers lifted Mr. Keen up and they carried him down the hallway and out the doors and through the town, up and down, in and out. And everywhere they went, the people said, what a fine, fine school with such fine, fine teachers and fine, fine children and a fine, fine principal. The end. I am so glad that Tilly was able to talk to Mr. Keene and tell her the things that she wasn't learning and her brother and her dog, they weren't able to learn other things because she wasn't home with them and teaching them. So our question that I'd like you to ask based on the story is that if you had school all summer long like Tilly what are some activities or healthy activities that you would miss out on that you wouldn't be able to do? So I want you to think about some of the healthy activities, going to the park, going to the pool, things that you would do, maybe exercising, playing outside. What are some activities you wouldn't be able to do if you had school all summer? So, here is our sentence starter. If I had school all summer like Tilly, I wouldn't be able to, and then I wrote write two to three activities that you wouldn't be able to do if you had school all summer long. Our bonus is since one of the other enrichment activities was to write a letter, I would like you to write a letter to a favorite teacher thanking them for teaching you. Now, it could be a teacher that you have now who you're interacting with through video chats and maybe they're still um, doing things to help you learn, creating videos, or it could just be a past teacher from kindergarten, first grade, or second grade, something that you did an activity that you thought was really fun that you learned, um, something that you really remember that teacher doing, and you want to thank them for teaching that to you. So here I have, I'll show you a close-up. Here I have um, like an organizer like we do in writing for what your letter should look like. So this is like our LAB, so we should be familiar with these. Our letter is about books. So at the top right, we would have the date, which is 4 7 20. And that's today's date. You don't have to do this today, but whatever day you do it, you write that day's date. Then you would skip a line and then write dear, and then I wrote Mrs. or Mr., so whichever one, blank. And then we always have a comma after that, after the person's name. And then I would skip a line, and then you could write thank you so much for... Okay, and then here I have write at least four sentences in your letter. So I know all of you are capable of doing that. So write at least, so it could be four or more sentences, thanking your teacher for something that they've taught you, something that you really remember, something you thought that was fun. And then at the bottom, we have love or from, comma. We always put a comma either after from or or love, and then you have your name right underneath. So I'm gonna put that up here, and I'm going to take a picture of this and send it so that you have it and you can look at it for help. So if you were following along with the motions, great job guys, you did awesome. I hope you enjoyed the story today, and I really look forward to hearing your responses. It really makes Miss Canderin's day when she sees um, your writing and your different responses that you're doing. Um, I want to give a little shout out to uh, Parker and Genesis. They both did a PowerPoint, which is um, a program on a computer. And they, Genesis talked about a hero, which was a doctor. And then Parker did a few things in his PowerPoint. He interviewed his dad and um, he did a really awesome job, and so did you, Genesis. And I love seeing um, 
and hearing all the other responses too. But you guys did an awesome job. All right, I will see you next time. Bye.